Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and having a fantastic day. In this video, we are going over a common engine failure for the GM LE2, which can be found in the second gen Chevy Cruze, which was in production in late 2016 to its end of production in 2019. The specific car being worked on in this video is a 2017 Cruze with 61,000 miles. The symptoms of this car were the engine was running very rough, it had a lack of power, and had a P0301 code. Uh, this is a cylinder one misfire code. Whenever you have a misfire code before purchasing any parts, it is important to perform a compression check and a cylinder leak down test. For this particular vehicle, cylinder one had almost no compression, which then necessitates the need for the cylinder head removal. When the cylinder head was removed, no issues were found with the valves or gasket, which then necessitates the need to remove the pistons for further inspection. When the pistons were removed, the issue was found. The cylinder one piston ring land was broken off. Surprisingly, this piece was broken, but floating in the cylinder bore staying in its normal spot without damaging the bore. Only minor scuffing on the bore was observed and this cleaned up with drill honing. This video shows the part after being cleaned up in an ultrasonic cleaner and gives you a better idea of what the failure mode looks like. I did some research on this ring land failure and it appears to be from detonation or just a poor piston design and it failed from fatigue. The customer was using 87 octane fuel, which GM says is acceptable, but I personally have a hard time believing that high octane fuel is not required on any small turbo engine due to the higher cylinder pressures and thus more prone to detonation in comparison to naturally aspirated. Now on to fixing the issue. If you look at the original replacement parts, you will see that it has been discontinued. To me, this is a smoking gun of a design issue that GM knew about. The replacement pistons were also fairly cheap and included everything you needed, including the rings and bearings. Almost like they designed this nice upgrade kit to be used frequently. I'm not going to go step by step into this repair, but I will give you an overview if you want to tackle this project. For a seasoned mechanic who has done work like this before, this shouldn't be too difficult. The first thing to do is to take the top half of the motor off. This includes the intake parts, exhaust parts, passenger motor mount, which you will then need to support the engine, belt drive parts, timing cover, cams, and then the cylinder head. Here is the cylinder head as I removed it. I tried to leave as many parts on as possible to save time and effort. This includes the high pressure fuel pump, coolant distribution block, and intake manifold. If you had a high mileage motor, this would be a good time to replace gaskets. You also want to thoroughly inspect the valves for any damage. Next is the oil pan, and the oil pan itself has a stamped steel cover that does have to be removed first in order to disconnect what I assume to be the level sensor. These were a pain to get off as the gasket maker was glued on very well. As always, heat is your friend. You also need to remove the windage tray and oil pump. And finally, you've made it to the pistons. Here, all you have to do is unbolt the rod caps and carefully deadbolt the pistons out, making sure not to damage any of the bore. Here's a quick look at the main parts that had to be removed. The hardest part was probably the crank pulley. I used a universal puller and grabbed it from the inside out. I also put heat on the shank of the pulley to help it. The direct injectors were the second hardest. Instead of pulling the injectors, I unbolted the Allen bolts that were holding the fuel rail line to each injector body and rocked that carefully out. To put it back together, I just tightened the Allen bolts evenly and made sure not to pinch a gasket. I'm sure this is not by the book, but it worked for me and it beats buying a specific tool. For reassembly, here is the alignment of the piston rings. Here is the piston rod bolt torque. This is the head bolt torque in sequence. Here is the cam alignment. As you can see, the cam chain is marked, so it's hard to mess it up. One thing I noted is that the cam chain marks didn't line up from the factory when I took it apart. This doesn't mean it wasn't aligned correctly from the factory, they just don't use the marks. Or at least that's my guess. Here are the oil pan torques in sequence. You also have to use gasket maker for this. And lastly, here's the front cover torque and where you need to put your gasket maker. Just don't forget about the spots labeled number one in the middle of the cover. I hope this either helps you diagnose or fix your car. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I will answer. Good luck with this repair and have an outstanding day.